Hey, it's Jackie. My podcast, The Natural Healing Reel, features guests from all over the world. They're sharing their stories of natural healing modalities. My intention on the show is to aid people with alternative ways in healing, physically, mentally, and emotionally. This podcast recognizes the essential role that mainstream medicine plays in our daily lives, and in no way should this be taken as medical advice. Please seek the advice of a competent medical professional for your care as you see fit, and most importantly, take care. Coming to you from Oregon is Donald Gordon and Jamie MacArthur. Did I say that right? Yes. Good. How are you guys today? Great. Great. Good, good. And we are going to be talking about separation, divorce, and education and how to do that in the best possible way for ourselves, for our children, and our finances, hopefully, as well. <laughs> yeah, we do need a school because I'm uh, personally going through it, as I just shared, and it's a tough, it's a tough gig. So we're hoping that we all get a little gem out of your knowledge today. Thank you. So, Jamie, you're uh, you're the head. So you were just stating that you're the head of this educational center. Um, I'm the director of operations. Yeah, so I think Donald is in charge, aren't you, John? <laughs> well, yeah, executive <laughs> director. That. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually the the founder of the company, the one with all the knowledge. You know, so <laughs> we go to him for pretty much everything. Good. I, I know. I I could tell that he's full of wisdom sitting there. How did that <laughs> all uh, start for you, Donald? Did you? Uh, have a situation that you had to go through or friends, family? How did this all come on your plate? Um, yes, I did. Um, I, I came at it from two directions. I came at it from academically. I was a professor of psychology for most of my career at a university. And um, my interest, I was working in the area of delinquency and treatment of delinquency. And we're using family therapy to work with families of delinquents in their homes. And I noticed that the, um, the these delinquent kids very rarely had any contact with their biological fathers. And uh, the lit- the research literature bore that out. They were mostly split uh, split homes. The mother had re- maybe repartnered, but the, the father wasn't anywhere around. And that was one of the reasons the kids became delinquent because they had lost contact with their father and there was only one parent parenting the child. And sometimes when the mother repartnered her boyfriend or if she married him or stepfather was harsh toward the children. Sure. And they didn't, didn't really accept them as his own and they didn't accept them as their, as their father. So they, the kids were at risk when their parents split up and the father stop being involved for various reasons sometimes because he didn't want to something because the mother, because the mom didn't want him to whatever um so i think if we can if we can figure out a way to keep the fathers involved when the parents split up then yeah. we can reduce the risk for delinquency and we can as it turns out you can reduce the risk for kids behavior problems and depression okay, so i wasn't lucky enough to have the dad leave <laughs> it's just oh, no. of course they need to have their dad and i've always even though it's not in my best interest i believe it is it's their dad and especially little girls so i imagine for boys as well you need that that love from your dad and if yes. it's not there oh goodness that's uh that's been a generational pattern in, in my family. And it's incredible how important each role is. So, Oh yeah. Especially yeah. Well, girls, as we mentioned, girls, if, if girls lose touch with their fathers, um, they're more likely to have an uh, unwanted pregnancy. They're more likely to get pregnant without being married. They'll be sexually active at a younger age. It's almost like they're trying to replace their dads with a boyfriend. Um, and there is, um, in Las Vegas, a juvenile court judge noticed, noted that the uh, pimps would prey on girls who didn't have any contact with their fathers to seduce them into prostitution. Do you know, and because they, they need that, they, they're looking for that extra love. Like they're right. looking and, for why they're not enough. Right. That, and, then, and the pimps yeah. would give them that. They would start off by being very paternal toward them, you know, giving them that extra attention. And then they would get them involved with drugs and prostitution. But they knew that there was a father hunger 
in, the, in these girls, and they use that to get them into prostitution. Um, I'm with, actually really surprised by what I've learned. Like, there's real processes that people learn and use to give them the upper upper yeah. hand over somebody emotionally. Um, yeah. is, so that that, that was is the whole that, pimp hooker thing. Is that real prevalent in Oregon where you guys are, or? No, definitely not as much as California and larger cities. Right, right. Yeah. Um, you'd ask, so you had, you had asked about why I got involved in this area. That one was academic in my research, and the other one was personal. I went through a, a really tough divorce, high conflict divorce. Uh, and my colleague at the at Ohio University, Jack Arbuthnot, he went through a divorce also, but it was, they started out with joint custody. And they're very cooperative and they shared parenting and their son was not exposed to conflict and the parents cooperated. And he and I decided that we want to we would like to teach people to have his kind of divorce, not my kind of divorce. And it was possible to do that because it, it had to do with training parents and what to do when they're splitting up and what not to do. And so we did, developed an educational program for parents who are divorcing or separating. And um, it became that program and a few others became popular in the 90s. In the late 80s, early 90s, there were no such programs, divorce education. There were none. Oh, no. But by the end of the 90s, more than half the counties in the United States, judges requiring parents to get such a program. So well, we got in. And, why we got are we not educated time. on this going in anyway? It's like one of the biggest things we do in our lives. And, right. and there isn't any education unless you're brought up with your parents and, you know, church. And I didn't have any of that. And I, I think a lot of people don't have that kind of um, awareness. Right. Right. And, it, and it's, it's really sad that there are some states in the U.S., like California, a huge state. They don't require any co-parent education when parents divorce. And it's, you know, it's, it's tragic because, you know, parents don't know what to do. They haven't been to a divorce before. They don't know what the risks are. They don't know how to protect themselves and their children. And they're, and they're hungry for knowledge. And they're not, in many places, they don't get anything. So we try, we try to persuade courts to offer this to parents. And um, I say in most courts, they do require it. But there's a lot of states that they, that, that they don't require it at all. Um, and New York state is one just starting to, and California, not at all. And, um, so we try to get the word out to judges about the benefits of, of doing this. Now, I think it's just huge. I think it's just amazing what you guys are doing. It seems like, okay, well, we're doing education. This is like, this is necessary. This is a nasty process. And I've unfortunately been through it a few times and, um, yeah, it's not good. It's the takedown like who's going to win type thing, but everybody loses, especially the children. Right. And, exactly. and you get some consciousness about, okay, we're damaging. Everybody's getting damaged. You know, we got to stop this. Like, it's like fighting over a car or like it gets silly. Right. He right. said, she said, but, but, and, and, and we're killing ourselves and our children. Like I can tell you in my home and what I've seen with my, my children, thank God the courts gave us mandatory counseling family counseling for the kids like yeah people right. need that we all need that so but jamie tell me about the courses like what would somebody have uh i'd come into the education center and what would i be expecting so the classes are all online um we have the mandatory program is our four-hour program that many courts and judges require parents to take when they do divorce or separation and uh the classes are mostly video series that you go through we've actually won a few awards for them the video yeah congratulations content. good for you thank you thank good you you guys um, so it's mostly video. There's some guided questions, which are just questions that give you the answer. And then at the end of each chapter in our four hour program, there's five chapters that they go through. And then, you know, they have a quiz at the end of each chapter. So they can complete the program at their own pace. It's not required that you do all four hours at once. You can log in and out as you need to, which is why the online option is, is, so compelling is that most parents don't have four hours to just sit and take a program in no, person, especially. 
that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we started out with that program. We, um, Don also developed an eight hour program, which is for high conflict parents that, uh, you know, uh, the first four hours is our four hour program. And then it goes further into high conflict situations and how to keep your children out of the middle of the conflict. Yeah. And that's a difficult one, especially when you're all in the same house and you're getting triggered, triggered, triggered. And, and it's just, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I ended up having to leave myself because I could, I could not, no matter how I, how hard I tried, I could not get out. I could get any ground, any tra- like the traction of let's have a conversation that's longer than two sentences. No, nope. exactly. And those poor yeah. children, like, and they think I'm the crazy one because yeah. I would go right to 10. <laughs> it, and right. It, you need, to, I didn't have, I didn't know what I looked like or was coming across because I had just lost like all these family members all in a row. And uh, it, it was a really, really challenging time. Concussions, nasty divorce, big businesses, lots of money. Like it was just, and lots of nasty stories that are untruths being told. Exactly. I think one of the toughest things because you're, you're grieving and you're in pain and your best friend that you thought was your partner is taking you out. And I don't have any of these tools, right? I was just, I just kept asking like, why are you doing this? Like what's happening? Like maybe I am crazy. Like, you know, there's a, yeah. Is that a common thing? How, like, I, I know I was deep, deep in it until I started really searching. No, I knew I needed help. Yeah. Oh, it, absolutely. It's yeah. common because it's, it's, uh, there's two things at stake that scare the, the, the devil out of us is that our finances are going to be reduced and our financial security is going to be reduced and our access to the, our children may be threatened. And yeah. so those two things make us very afraid yeah. and it's easy to get triggered. And we're really afraid. We're in a we're in a fight or flight mode much of the time because of those we're afraid of losing those things, and they're important important things. And in the fight or flight mode, we can, we're easily triggered, and our brains don't our, our reasoning calm brains don't work. We don't have access to calm and reasoning. And we teach in the programs the high conflict and the regular children in between. We teach parents about what happens with their brains, why they're being triggered, why they say things they wish they hadn't. Dopamine Uh, rush. Yeah. (laughs) Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dopamine. That's a huge awareness, right? It's it's really a dream. Having that awareness that you're that you're in this pattern of because we don't see ourselves, do we? It's very hard to anyway. Right. Uh, exactly. and we don't see ourselves and we, don't, you know, we, we, we can't take the perspective of somebody else. We don't know how we're coming across to our children, to our partner. We don't know because we're in this uh, cortisol adrenaline rush. Which 100%. Is fight or flight. Victim, victim, poor me. Oh, my God. All, all of it. The whole bag. Right. 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 And what I tend to say it and it just gets bigger, that bag. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And in our programs, we do teach, you know, fear. Um, usually is misconstrued or comes out as anger. And so I I tell parents, you know, people a lot that when, even when you're the petitioner or respondent or, you know, whatever the situation is, you both still have fear. Even if you're the petitioner, you're still afraid, you know, it, it feels like, okay, I, you know, I'm losing everything. Even if you want the divorce or separation, you still feel at a loss. And so most parents believe it's just me. I'm the one who's, you know, being attacked and I'm scared that I'm going to lose my, I, I'm, you know, it's all about me, but it is both parents in, in almost all cases that feel the same way. They just, it comes out as anger or resentment. So. So true. hundred percent. That, that totally rang true for me. And then the, because you're going to a hundred or, you know, zero to 10 so quickly, it's really hard to figure out what's happening in your body that quickly, right? Because right. for me, yeah. I watched parents do that. And then being in a relationship like that myself and trying to navigate what was happening and what was mine and what wasn't. And it, like it, it's quite a, and I have lots of, I have a lot of education in um, the mind, body, soul, spirit, universe, quantum field, jo- Dr. Joe. Like I'm just like a lifetime of that stuff really tough. Still, I'm still working through. I'll just go unconscious. 
right? Mm-hmm. And back down the, the spiral. <laughs> the good thing is I don't stay there. Sometimes yes. I'd be down there for four months, five months, and all of a sudden you'd pop back up out of the rabbit hole and you'd be like, how did that happen to me again? Right? Because you know it's just the, it's just uh, the mind. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Well, we, we, teach parents, we, we teach parents. We teach parents what to do to calm themselves down and get their rational mind engaged again. They can oh get my the god, Donald! I love you already. Sorry, I'm talking so much, but this is very, very passionate. I, I, I love that you're doing this because yeah. well, that information really is just starting to come about, right? Right. And parents tell us they love that they didn't know this, find it really helpful. They didn't know they could get themselves out of the fight or fight state and what they can do about it. And then once they do that, they can attune to their children. They can, they can see what their children are feeling. But when they're in the fight or flight state, they can't. And so we tell them in order to protect your children, you've got to calm yourself down so that you can uh, minimize the conflict, so you can take a break. So, you know, and we teach them various methods that, that there's evidence for that work in calming yourself down. And you can do it quickly. Uh, yep. We teach them paying attention to your body so you can notice when you start to go into fight or flight so that you can start to calm yourself down earlier so you don't get to that point. Um, and people are, they love this information. They didn't know it. And it gives them a sense of control when they're feeling out of control. And that's really important. And we also teach, we have a children's program. We also teach the children how to do that too, how to tell their parents when they're feeling caught in the middle between them, how to give them an I message where they talk about they're scared or they're frightened or they're sad or they're angry. And then it, it, the parents will listen to that when the kids say what they're feeling. Um, and that helps the parents get out of their fight or flight mode. So that we, we, we both, we teach the children, we teach the parents about ways they can calm themselves and ways they can, sh- their better selves can show up. Yeah. But you have and a better it, and self. It takes practice, right? Like you have to yes. have the awareness and then the knowledge, and then you have to, not, a, not enough to know you need to know how, right? Right. 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 Yeah. We go over the programs are skills based. So we do rep- repeat the skills several times throughout the program so that it sticks with parents. And parents are more likely to relate to our program because it is video based. It's real, real types of scenarios that parents can feel like, oh, hey, yeah, that's exactly what's going on in my life. So here's a better way to do it. We do three videos. Here's a better way to handle this same situation or a worse way. And that way it really sticks with parents, the the skills and lessons that are taught. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, If you can resonate with somebody telling their, sharing their story. That's why I love the podcast because you can share authentically what you went through, what you're feeling. And if somebody else resonates with that and is like, oh my goodness, she did it. I'm going to do it. Right. Nobody could do it. One did it. And then five more went. Right. And it really is that powerful just through. Experience. The parents see the parents in the videos making these mistakes that they can relate to. Oh, they're doing the same thing I do. And then they see that same parent using skills to do it better. And then they say, oh, I can do that. They did. They learned skills. They improved it. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. I had actually a lady come off a treadmill on a cruise on a Joe Dispenza cruise. Went, oh, my God, I see you saved my life. And I was like, what's happening? And just wow. she shared. I heard that what you were dealing with and I thought. God, if she's doing that, then I can do this. And she said, I just ran for half an hour for the first time in like 10 years or 15 years because she's had her story about her hip and the pain and da, 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 da. And of course, we don't realize what we're doing to ourselves. Right. Like every time we tell that story, we're energetically just right back in it. Every That's single true. time. And how do you not tell the story when it's in your face? That's, I think, a really big um a really big tool. And what, what Donald, would you say when you are really in the midst of something and you're like, okay, how can I not look at this? How can I pretend or look at and find the love in this person at this moment? <laughs> or right. pretend this isn't happening. Pretend, right. I always had that. I understand it, but it's really hard to wrap your head around a new pattern, healthy pattern <laughs> like that when you're right in fight or flight. Yeah. And it helps to do, you know, to, to change the environment, to say, I, I need to take a break. I need some time for myself, take a walk outside, 
you know, get into nature, take some, one of the things we teach people is start taking deep breaths and that calms you down and just focus on the sound of your breath going in and out. That puts you in the here and now, and that helps you get out of fight or flight. It's very effective. And, um, but it, you, you may have to leave the room to do that or, or say, I have to hang up the phone. I, you know, I have to leave. Another little trick we'll teach people in the high conflict program is picture your ex that, that is being very aggressive toward you. Sh- picture them shrinking down to be the size of a midget with a high squeaky voice. And then, <laughs> that makes I them, love that. That's great. <laughs> so that, 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 that makes them seem less, in, yeah, le- less <laughs> intimidating. <laughs> And you, in your mind, you can do that. <laughs> okay, I learned about the gray rock. I am a gray rock. Yes. <laughs> not, not a polka dot gray rock, not a pretty gray rock, just a gray rock. It was like, <laughs> hey, why didn't somebody tell me about the gray rock earlier? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm wow. going to be a gray rock today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, just but those tools are important, especially when you're in the midst of your body going through. Like I can find myself, my body's already gone, you know, and then I'm in the midst of it going, what am I doing? You know, because I'm now watching the patterns that I was so unconscious about before. That, that's right. what we, we, we use uh, mindfulness uh, a lot in these programs. And that's what we're teaching people, giving people the ability to step back and look at what their mind is doing, observe themselves. Once you can step back and observe yourself, then you can change things. You're, you're a hundred percent right. And yeah. that is such a powerful tool. You teach that. We do. Yes. In, in both of the programs. Yeah. I think that that's, I think that's like a big, huge gem. It is. And you become well, mindfully funny. aware of what you're thinking, what you're feeling. And one of the things we tell, teach people, and there's good research to support this is to, is to name the feeling that you're having. It's called name it and tame it. When you name the feeling you're having, it becomes less intense and less negative, and you have why more control. Uh, we're not sure why. Uh, it, 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 something has to do with the prefrontal cortex, yeah. but there's, there's research that done by Dan Siegel at US, UCLA that when people are exper- in fight or flight and they're in a functional MRI and it shows parts of your brain that are all lit up, like the amygdala, amygdala is where this fight or flight happens. When the amygdala is all activated and lit up and then they name the feeling they're having, the amygdala doesn't light up as much and it becomes less active. So there's a physical change in the fight or fight part of your brain when you name the feeling. So that's strong evidence that it works. That's interesting. Do you think it's because you're looking at it now? You're not attached to it? You're able to... Yes. Like, Good like point. You're outside right. of your body now. You're not right. You're, you're not swept up in it. You're you're saying I'm feeling scared right now. You don't have to do it out loud. You can just do it to yourself. You could, or you could, if you're having an argument with your partner, you could say, "I'm feeling very frightened now." Yeah. And um, you could say it out loud or or to yourself. We teach children how to do this, and uh, they, their children and as young as first grade can learn about the brains and how this works. And they learn this in the Mind Up program, which is Goldie Hawn's program or taught around the world. They, in the first grade, they can learn to do this. They can learn about the hippocampus and the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex and what they can do with their feelings. Um, so uh, we know people can learn to do this and that's what we teach them in these programs. What is the kids program called again? It's called uh, Children in Between Four Kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you know we're doing the counseling, and, and I'm just, you know we're kind of you know it's a, it's a slow progress, right? But yes. it, it, the, somebody needs to give them something, right? To besides the crazy parents, one saying one thing, one saying the other thing, and they've lost their whole safety net. Yeah, like I remember Christmas coming, and it was devastating because they have that awareness that that family unit that what I once cherished as the net, the safety net, the, the great life that is so sad. It's gone. (laughs) It's not there anymore. That's not ever going to be the same as it was. It's devastating. How do you deal with that at, you know, an emotional time when you're already emotional and your child's bawling their eyes out? 
Right, yeah. right. We do. Yeah, we do suggest the kids program be taken, you know, with their parent as well, because I think it's important to have that connection with your child and understand um, their feelings and how they can express those feelings to you as a parent as well. Um, it goes over also, you know, uh, children feeling like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm never, now I have two birthdays or now I feel like this and my parents, you know, don't love me anymore. And it explains to them the myths that most kids feel like my parents don't love me and the truths of your parents still love you. And now you'll just have two separate birthdays. And now you get to do other things that, to make them look forward, you know, instead of in in their feelings. Well, and I think, too, um, at the intense parts, right, while you're kind of in the, the beginning process where you don't have really any tools, um, sharing that with your kids, they feel that you're not grounded, right? You're right. not, you're trying yes. to, you're trying to help yourself so you I knew that if I could feel and heal, right, is right. that they would feel and heal and they would yes. watch me, which is what has happened. But it's been a long journey because there's a lot of behavioral crap in there that I wasn't, yes. <laughs> that we, I wasn't aware of. And I'm like, okay, is that the shadow? <laughs> right, right. Like it's, well, and, and, we think, and we I, think it's that and, and did it somehow in our head. Right. And it's not walking through it to look at it actually is very exhilarating. Yeah. Well, a funny story, actually, when I went through my divorce, uh, my son was only, I want to say 10 or 11 months old, but he, we never fought, you know, we never had issues. It was just, I was young, we had a child and then, you know, we, we knew that it, it wasn't going to work, but my son would cry almost constantly to the point of screaming. It was so loud. Um, the doctors it, it couldn't tell me why, you know, he was eating enough. There was no real explanation when I left and we got divorced. It stopped happening entirely. Yeah. And we're talking a child who can't really even talk yet. He felt what I felt so intensely yes. without ever having to hear us argue. He knew I was unhappy. Oh my God. That is so what happens. That's, yeah. I didn't even realize that because we're so in our own shit that we're not yes. even, even able to look at that. Oh my goodness. Right. She's feeling what I'm feeling. Exactly. Oh my God. Right. So what you were right? saying about, you know, your children watching you progress and, um, you know, take control is probably one of the best things you can do for them is really focus on how do I get myself in a better place because your children will naturally mimic that as well. Do you know what my daughter said to me? One of my daughters said to me, mm -hmm. she said, what? mom, how are you doing this? Yeah. I was like, I, I have to, like, like I have to, They're, like, you don't have a choice. You, you do the work and, right. you know, learn it and build it up or you die. I think. Yeah. I, I don't think that there's really an option there. <laughs> Agreed. Really. Especially when you have children, you don't have another option. You no, have to think you. of them. It's killing yeah. you because how you feel. And then you're looking at them, you're killing them. And then you, the mother guilt comes on like five times, right? Right. Like 500 times more because we do that naturally. You know, right. When you, when your children see you uh, express your feelings about what's going on and then they see you, see you calm yourself down. They see you being able to refocus. You're teaching them to do the same thing by example. And that's, that's a, it's such an important life skill. So I, know, and I did teach them, Donald, I told them, don't do what I do, do what I say. Right? Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we're such, we're so stupid, right? Because that's what <laughs> they're doing. Like, <laughs> right. They don't know any better. They don't know how to do their own thing. Apparently we don't either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> wow. You guys, this is great. Is this an expensive course for, um, now you guys are in Oregon. I'm in Canada. Like, is this a worldwide thing because it's online? Is this accessible? So we, we do the U S as well as Canada. We do have an option, uh, online for, for people that are in Canada. Uh, we do not have the program available elsewhere. Technically, uh, Dawn, I know that they do the in-person teaching of our programs in uh, Singapore and Portugal, actually, but it's not the online yet. Not there yet. 
Not, not there yet. yet. In the beginning yes. stages, AI is kicking into full gear. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's true. <laughs> true. But the uh, the four hour class is about forty or sixty dollars on average, that's unless uh, yes, that's unless a, a parent. Deal. Yes, that's exactly. Really well, good. it's so much cheaper than doing you know a year long of counseling or mediation services, attorneys. Exactly. They're not, and they're you, not giving these tools. Like the tools exactly. that you're teaching, actually, I, I've learned these tools, like through all yes. the different online hours and hours of journaling and writing and meditating. And it, right. that, But this stuff works like this. It, it is something that we need in our, we need to know this stuff. Right. Right. And we have parents that come back after the fact because no parent wants to take the program. You're going through a divorce or separation and you're like, why do I have to take a parenting class? I'm a yeah, great I parent. I don't need this. taking all my money. I don't have any money for that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But after yeah, the program, <laughs> yeah, after the program, these same parents come back and they're like, wow, I learned so much. I wish I would have taken this before my divorce which is part of the the audience that we're really trying to reach now is before you go through a divorce or even afterwards tools that can still help, yeah. you know? So the program isn't um, just specifically for divorcing or separating parents either. It can be taken outside of that. I think it's a, a full on COVID example as well with all the fear that was running. I mean, you could even look at somebody when you were at the grocery store. Exactly. They thought you were going to kill them. So it's yeah. Still, you know? yeah. And God forbid you cough anywhere. That that would be yeah. awful. Right? I know you would have to say, I, I have allergies. So just, exactly. think, you know, just like, <laughs> like you, and people are doing that. Like it was just what a horrible time Yeah, through there. And That's that true. trauma sticks with us. It, it's a fear. And if we don't understand this stuff, it gets stuck in there. And right with our other fears and stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, what you said earlier also is that it did. I, I think Dawn, you had looked at that at some point. It did up the rate of divorces as well, because when you're stuck at, for two years in a home with your spouse and your children, I mean, that's rough. Do you have stats on that? I, I would be interesting to know that definitely had to have gone up, but it, it definitely did. I don't know by how much. I think something like 10%, but I'm not positive. Only, yeah. So nobody can and, get a lawyer. That's why they're all busy. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. true. And then, no, yeah. You know what it is, is that you guys are sharing the wealth of information. This is how you guys can heal yourself and, and possibly heal your marriage. Right. Because if you have these tools, you don't have to do that dance, right? Because it's the ego that's going back and forth, right? And the exactly. That they're trying to take whatever the story is, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Usually it's so blown out of um, perception, right? They're right. perceiving that you're thinking and doing something that you've never thought or done, right? right. They've got a whole story on how you've, right? That you're yeah. doing that as you're, and you're thinking, what happened? Like the communication is- right. is A, a lot of, um, a lot of what I think stems from- from divorce or separation is assuming we, we go over this as well, assuming the other person's motives. So even before a divorce, you know, you're married and your spouse has a bad attitude, you know, for a few days in a row. And you're like, Oh, well, they're just angry at me. They're tired of me. And, you know, now I'm going to do this or something to, to retaliate essentially, but it all started because this other parent was upset about something that had nothing to do with you at all. And it's assuming their motives are are bad when maybe in reality, they really weren't. And that person is assuming that your motives are, are not exactly. integral. And then you're thinking that there's, so now you've got two people that are, are thinking that the other one. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Well, we've watched war over and over and over again. So we're good at this. Yeah. So we teach that. We teach people to check themselves. Are you assuming your ex's motives are, 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 are negative? Check it out. And you, you mentioned communication skills, Jackie. We, there's, we teach a lot of communication skills that parents tell us if they had gotten these skills before they filed for the doors, they would have worked harder on their marriage. Because they work. Because they work. They yeah. And they, you know, increases trust, intimacy, uh, closeness and they weren't using, they didn't have these skills. They didn't know about them. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. People I also. Didn't, 
I mean, yeah. I knew I knew about about the, to how to heal and da, 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 but not with somebody else, right? And not with all of the fear and the tension of all the other things that are happening. Like it's at such a um, a higher level of dysfunction that yeah. it's starting at that if you don't have any communication skills with somebody, like I was doomed already. I and I know now because that was such a uh, he's saying that I'm saying this, which I'm like, never even thought that ever in my life. Right. Like, it's like, how is this happening that I now, when I'm getting feedback, I'm like, okay, so what did you hear me say? Um, because especially the men, Jamie, if you notice this, they don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. In most cases, Us women, yeah. we just want to be heard. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the men won't just want to fix the problem. They're not going to want to hear it. They just want to fix it. Yeah, it's so true. Right? Yeah, I cover everything with duct tape. Yeah, don't, right. don't need to listen to it. Don't tell me your problem anymore. Stop right there. Let me just give you the hammer. Exactly. Right. Well, you guys yeah, are I, great. You know what? This is good. This is so good. It's yeah. uh, yeah. I'm excited that you guys are doing this. It's uh, do you, is there a lot of this now just coming up? Like I have just, I guess, cause I'm going through that. I'm noticing different people that are starting to share this information that have come through tough, tough stuff to help. This is, this is coming up in more, um, I guess, programs and research. Unfortunately, the, the vast majority of co-parent education programs don't teach skills. They just overwhelm parents with information. And parents don't remember it very for very long, and then within a, a week they've forgotten most of it. So, by by teaching skills, using videos that people can relate to, teaching people about the brain, the, those are useful things that are having an impact. But most programs don't do this. They're just yeah, right. they're a Zoom you're right, program. Hundred percent. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. We need a four to. Hour how, Zoom. how do you do that? Right. Yeah. How do you clear that? Okay, so I know that that's my problem, but then I get busy because the kids cry. Okay, well, I didn't right. finish that process, so it's still stuck in there, and now I can't right. remember what I was, what the epiphany was of what I realized I had, you know, was the problem, which is usually different than what you're thinking it is. But you get this big epiphany, and you want to, you know, have those tools to go. Okay, how do I, how do I hold that? How do I remember, right? Right. <laughs> because right. that's the big thing. How Because then all of a sudden I'm unconscious, and it's happening again. I'm like, damn, what did I do last time? Because I can't remember right now. Right. 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 And that's why our programs, you can also go back and, you know, rewatch the videos and go over them because we, we do understand that having children is a full-time job. Some parents don't have, you know, 30 minutes to an hour to do a section of the program. So you can pause it and say, okay, I'm going to focus on this. And then I'm going to come back when I can, you know, really pay attention to the program and the lessons. It's and most so great. Yeah. It's so frustrating when you're doing something, and then all the work's lost, right? You got to start again. Uh, that yeah. is one of my biggest uh, things that I'm really working on is multitasking or, you know, being interrupted when I'm doing things is really, really tough for me. Yeah. So that is something I'm working on. So I totally understand. Yeah. You know, I think I, I did a podcast and we're not supposed to be multitasking. Because right, right. You're failing at two things at once properly at yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, oh, good. I can let that one go then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> kind of lost that with all of the overwhelm and the stress. <laughs> right. With, with Zoom classes, so many classes, co parent classes in the US are taught on Zoom. Can yeah. you imagine watching a talking head for four hours and no. paying attention the whole you time? Can. You can't. Yeah, you can't. No, you can't. You can't. You're, what are you I mean, taking in the first few minutes? And then after that, it's all blah, blah, blah. Well, that's to right. Off. 10 minutes. The research shows that we're, our attention for listening to stuff is good for 10 minutes. And then we need to have a brain shift, do something else, and then recharge. And then another 10 minutes. We can't go 30 minutes or 60 minutes or four hours and remember anything. Right. So no, and, and that's proven. That's a scientific fact, yes, right? And. Yes. The one thing that I did learn from Dr. Joe Dispenza was he gets you to turn and tell the genius beside you what you what you just learned, what so how right. you understood what he just taught. And most of the people can't. Right. Right. But if you can explain it, then you know it. Then you, then know you it. can actually feel it and and have the experience. Once you've had the experience, then we've got a now we've got a new program we can run. Right. 
but right. yeah. you have to be, you have to be aware. Yeah. 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 Good, yeah. good, good, good. Wow. So what, what do you want to have? Like, what's an important message that besides everything that we just talked about, that is important. Is there something that's really, you want to make sure that we know about that people know about? Is there, um, I would really say, you know, for those that are going through divorce or separation or even beforehand, if you're, you know, struggling in your relationship, we really just want, want those parents to know that there are resources that can help. We have a lot of parents. I think it's 95% of parents that say they would recommend our program to other parents going through the same situation. Yeah. So don't feel completely lost. You know, there are tools and resources out there and you don't have to spend a million dollars, you know, with the counselors and all of these attorney fees and all the other stuff that comes with it. If you can actually apply skills that will help. Yeah. You, we t- tell parents, you're going to be parents of these children for the rest of your lives. You know, they're going to get married, weddings, grandchildren. This is a long-term relationship. You can start making that relationship better right now because it's going to long-term. And your children need you to do that. For them to be well-adjusted, they have to get you to minimize the conflict and to cooperate and to to attune to their feelings. And we teach people how to do that. So it's People who hate each other can learn to do that and start to treat each other with respect by using these respectful communication skills. You know what? I uh, I actually had a conversation that was longer than a sentence for three days in Atlanta for the first time in a year and a half. And that was with proper tools sitting in the same room, first time in over a year and a half. That's amazing. Turning like one sentence and it goes... Right? right. It's just right. bizarre for those kids. What are, what, are, what are we teaching them? So as soon as we put the focus on, we need to focus on our, our children healing because yeah. they've all, yeah. we're already, you know, took them down the highway backwards. The, yeah. And so as soon as that shift, that focus was shifted, we were able to think about somebody other than ourselves. Oh. Yeah. Good for you. That's amazing. Yes. It's a huge thing, right? I mean, but we keep, you, you know, that we'd flip back into something here. You get something that's got some energy on it, right? right. And it'd be like, could, but having the tools, we'd be able to bring it back down. So right. yeah, this, this is important work, you guys. I, uh, you. I took my hat to you, Donald and Jamie for putting this in ha- <laughs> Like this is total of service, of service. Thank you. Uh, I had a few friends that were telling me that they had a lot of uh, people in their lives that were committing suicide, I guess, is what was happening. That it wasn't being talked about. They didn't have any tool. Right. Right. That's true. Because the kids so intense sometimes if you don't and nobody understands what's happening, they think you're just whatever. Where, Where do you go? Yeah. Besides two school no. <laughs> right right but, you know, but prior to this prior to this becoming knowledge and being shared there really hasn't been this platform that i was aware of anyway right right and dawn actually we uh just had a conference in um la california uh, a few days ago and dawn actually part of his presentation that he gave was about um children and suicide and the the rates that have gone up for that as well. I, you read my mind as I have to say that the, the kids program teaches parents to, you know, and children what they're feeling, what the kids are feeling and how to get the kids to express that. In, in, in cases of suicide for preteens and teens, which has quadrupled in the last 10 years, um, in half the cases, parents didn't know their kids were depressed. In half of the cases. Yeah, that's really you guys, a hundred percent. And, and we're so again, back focused on the victim inside that we're not really seeing the victim that's right in front of us. Yeah, And I have to tell you that happened to me. And the day that I saw it, I was like, Whoa, like, it just like, it's the epiphany that hit, hit, like she's experiencing what I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. No love. Right. Right. No love from the man. Like that pattern is in there and prevalent generational and 
Yeah. And it's almost impossible to stop conflict or stop, um, you know, parental issues if you're not aware of your children's feelings, because then, it, you know, you don't understand that they're hurting by this. But once you recognize that it does affect them, it's so much easier to learn skills and to try to fix that situation. But a lot of parents just don't realize it yeah. because they're too wrapped up in their own late. problems. Yeah. I was lucky enough to uh, catch it before it was too late, but it was on right. that path. hundred percent. We both were, yeah. I mean, the whole program was running down that path because yeah. if you don't have something that's going to help you or you don't have it, you just, you're looking at that. This isn't working. Oh my God. Now this, now that, right. That's how it, yeah, it's the spiral effect. That's exactly. the spiral of the ego, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's all about education and right. awareness, right? Right. right. Yeah. So we are going to all go to school online. We're going to uh, get to, um, <clears throat> it is called the Center for Divorce Education in Oregon. So we're going to get online there and it's only 40 to $60, which is thousand dollars in Canadian dollars. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and the children's yeah. program is only $20. Do you know right. what? That you, you can't afford not to do that. And it's exactly. to me that if you didn't have a price on it, there would be no value. On yeah. it. That's exactly, That's exactly well, the right? point. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. We, yeah. We would give it away, but we're afraid people wouldn't value it. They yes. don't. They don't. Right. And I've been through that lesson where you, you were helping somebody and you're giving, giving. Yeah. Uh, can I have this? Do you have this? You right. They just learned that. Right. You're- right. You just want more and more. Yeah. Uh, but I will go ahead. I'll share those links with you as well, Jackie. So yeah. that you. And so we'll do a write up um, with the podcast when it goes out, and I'll make okay. sure that all of that is in there. So please do share okay. what people can like a quick access. That would be awesome. Amazing. All yeah. right, we'll do. Okay, so let me know how this progresses. And uh, Donald, have you written books as well? You seem like you're. Uh, I've written uh, about 60 journal articles, research articles, and also chapters uh, of books. And I've also written books for parents uh, that we have in our program about guiding them through divorce. They're short books, about 70, 80 pages. Um, yeah, I like so, those yeah, books. things like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I like those 68 but <laughs> Yeah, I just had a feeling that there was a, a quite a bit of material out there. And yourself, Jamie, are you running down that road to giving? Uh, no, no, I mostly uh, help with the back end of things, you know, customer support and websites, you know, Huge. that type of part. Huge. Huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys are a great team. Thank you. Thanks for coming and uh, sharing this with me. And uh, I'm going to uh, go have a look online and see what I can do for uh, signing up, doing the kids and myself. Awesome. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Give us some feedback too. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. my and, and come knocking when you're ready to uh, to expand on uh, where we're headed with this. Yeah. Will okay. do. Thank Thanks. you, Jackie. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Donald. All right.